Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I just got done my beauty sleep, as you can see. I look fabulous. Uh, this is Sunday morning. We're gonna do a little kitchen de la swole action because Jordan always sending me these videos on Instagram, TikTok, of these other guys making really good food and it makes me feel like I can't do it. It makes me feel like I don't stand up to what these guys are doing. So, I'm gonna do it. And we're gonna make, I guess they're like pigs in a blanket, I'm not really sure, but I saw this, this recipe where you just do some 647 bread, you flatten it, put it in your French toast marinade, and then you wrap it around the sausage, and then just cook the sausages on the griddle. I was like, super easy. Macro friendly, because we're using 647 bread, we're using chicken sausages, and then we got a sugar-free syrup. So if you guys are cutting, you know, or just trying to watch your calorie, you know, uh, intake, then this is a great option. If you don't care about your calorie intake, and you don't care about your macros, by all means, use the good stuff. And by the good stuff, I mean regular bread, maybe some shala, kala, how do you, do you know how to say that? What? You know the thick bread, the thick stuff? I think it's kala. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know, but you know what I'm talking about, like when they do the thick French toast. Mm -hmm. mm. And then regular sausages, because I really think that regular sausages are better than chicken sausages, but chicken sausages are, are, are you know, they're okay. They're like, you know, number three on the bench. You will still get the job done, but definitely not your starter. Uh, and then, oh yeah, regular syrup. Gosh, I love regular syrup. But we gotta, we gotta, uh, you know, stick to our goals here. So we're gonna get it done. And I like doing these meals because it makes you feel like you're getting a little treat, yet you're not feeling guilty about it. And then uh, we're gonna probably do some training. But first things first is I gotta, I gotta pour some coffee. So I watched Sausage Party last night for the first time in my life. I know. <laughs> wow. All I'm saying is wow. Like what did I actually just watch? But then I come in the kitchen today, of course, I start cutting up these sausages and I just think, <laughs> these poor guys. Like what am I doing to them? <laughs> but yeah, the movie's absolutely outrageous. I, just, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it. Wow. Uh, personally, I would like this to be regular sausage with regular syrup. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to look a little bit slender. Mmm. That's good, huh? Oh, I'm no Dave Portnoy. Yeah, I, th I think like an 8.5, 8.6. But I think it was a little skewed because I burnt the roof of my mouth last night and my taste is a little off. But for a healthy version, this is pretty banging. You get the pancake or French toast. You know, you can do pancakes, but we did a French toast. So I like French toast better, you know, the most. But And then, yeah, chicken sausage. Ooh. And there's lots of different chicken sausages you can get flavor-wise, which would affect your, you know, score. Mmm. That was the bite I was looking for. <laughs> that was a good bite. But I'm just going to bang like... No, I'm not going to bang. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the sausage party's getting ah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just going to eat you know, <laughs> a couple of these, and then we got to go train. But I like it because I get my carbs, my protein, and it's just it's quick. It only took us like 20, 25 minutes to make this, so I could do a bigger bunch, throw them in the fridge, and then just you know. Ah. <laughs> All right, so Jordan's gonna actually do some bag over bar work to in her strongman competition, and we're trying to figure out how to program today. I'm gonna be doing some zercher squats, which I've done in another video. Probably change up a few of the exercises uh, because my training week has been a little bit crazy, but you gotta adapt and you gotta figure out how to get in what you can, when you can. And on top of that, we're gonna be answering some of your guys' questions that you put on the YouTube channel Really appreciate that. So that's gonna to be today's session. Just training, talking about training, answering your questions, and having fun uh, with myself and Jordan, AKA Honey Boo Baby. All right, so doing some zerchers. I'm just doing five sets of three. Uh, kind of work it up to a couple heavy triples, RPE eight or nine. Uh, I got deadlifts tomorrow. So I don't want to fry myself too much because I'm really focusing on my deadlifts, but I still want to get a training session in. And then after this, probably do just some chest and tricep pump work uh, to fit the time constraints of today, and that won't interfere with tomorrow. But I want to answer some of your guys' questions on YouTube. Really appreciate you guys putting them on here. Uh, so as you guys are watching kind of the warm-up sets, they'll be playing in the background. I'm going to just riddle off some questions. So Owen4523 uh, says, really enjoy seeing these new videos. Are we gonna see you competing in strongman or powerlifting anytime soon? To be honest with you, I'm not sure. Uh, Jordan is actually doing a competition in April. I thought about competing at some point as well. I wanna be there to support her uh, because you know she's been to my shows before and supported me and I just wanna be there to enjoy the moment. Uh, but I think doing a local show or just something fun down the road would be good for me to have goals, training goals specifically. It really does help with my programming. That's kind of a tip I give to people where if you've been training, you're kind of lost, you don't know what to do. Sometimes signing up for a competition is great because it gives you that goal. It then makes your programming a lot easier to figure out because you have specific things you have to train for. Uh, but obviously I love Strowman. I've competed in it since 2017 and I would love to get back into it, just making sure that my body, my mind are all in the right place uh, when I do that. But I'm not gonna be going full send you know, with it at, the, at this moment, just trying to have fun and enjoy training, but I really appreciate your question. Yep, nice, real good. All right, last one. All right, let's go. Come on, you got this. Good, sit. Nice. Good job, man. Good work. Freaking animal. <laughs> All right, another question we got from Cool Gary. Is that like supposed to be Calgary or just that you're super cool, Gary? Either one, I'm cool with. Get it? Cool. But, all right, he asks, how many times a week do you recommend strongman specific uh, training? I currently train around the four main lifts. I'm now at a strongman gym and want to add this in. Do you recommend movement per each specific day or more? I know two questions. Yeah, so right off the bat, I think a lot of people sometimes overdo event training especially with things that are pretty basic, right? Like tire flips or some sort of carry. Not that we wanna neglect it, but what I like to do is I set up my base program and then say on that day, I was supposed to do uh, overhead press as the main lift. Well, I just swap out that overhead press for whatever would be a pressing event from the competition. So typically it's gonna be like a log or an axle or whatever press you just make that quick substitution on what you normally would have been your overhead strict press day. Same thing with the deadlift. So deadlift, if it is a conventional deadlift, cool, you can stick with that. But if it's a different kind of bar or different type of deadlift, you can easily implement that into your deadlift slot day. Now when it comes to event work, sometimes I'll sprinkle it in throughout the week, 
But I think like one to two days where you're doing moving events is all you need. Uh, so maybe it's like gonna be beginning of the week or midweek, and then maybe something on the weekend. Like I know in the past when I had the gym, we had strongman Saturdays. So people would do their normal training throughout the week. They'd show up on Saturday and that's when they would practice their events. So depends on where you're at, what the equipment you have available to you, and then kind of uh, you know how you're gonna structure that. But I think the easiest thing to do write that base program that you would and then figure out where you can just substitute either with the implement or event in how you would with your normal training and that should hopefully give you enough exposure to the movements now things that are a little bit more technical like a circus dumbbell or like a log clean and press or axe bar clean and press or maybe some sort of carry and load we really want to practice that technique i think that's important to put a little bit more time into. So you have to realize what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses. And if you look at those events, I always like to say, you know, what am I most looking forward to and what are my strengths? And then where are my weak areas that I need to improve? And typically when I know, like see those weak areas, I start to put an effort towards making myself better at that. Uh, so when I get to the competition, I'm not worried about it and I can do the best I can. And you have to remember Strongman, one thing that will really help you is instead of being really good at one or two events, it's actually being pretty good across the board and usually average, if you can be in like a top, you know, three placing on average, you're gonna podium. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. So hopefully that helps. All right, my friends, so Zercher's are done. We're gonna go to a triple at 365. And this is just something I've been doing for fun. You know, it's supposed to be a front squat variation. And I like doing these just because it helps me uh, build my anterior and posterior chain, uh, especially with trying to stabilize that weight. It's constantly trying to dump me forward. So I really have to brace my core, keep that real upright torso, and they're just fun to do. Do recommend, if you guys can, wear elbow sleeves. Makes it a little bit more comfortable. The axle bar is a little bit thicker too, which helps with comfort uh, rather than having a really thin regular barbell. Uh, but these will definitely help save you some pain and keep your elbows warm while you're doing them. So next, we're gonna do some slingshot bench. Got my slingshot right here. If you guys watched the other video, there's a little bit of a story behind the slingshot. So if you haven't, I highly recommend you check it out. Uh, but we're gonna do three sets, 10 reps, hoping you know that I can Get some real good quality reps with, I want to say, around like 275 for my working sets. Uh, and then we'll answer some questions throughout the, uh, the session. Let's go. All right, my man Cody asked a question. I'll see you at the Arnold, Cody. Uh, but when training accessories, do you tend to keep it to two or three main accessories, or do you have times where you're doing every accessory exercise? So uh, hopefully this answers your question. I'm just gonna tell you what I do. But if we look at a day like tomorrow, right, where I have deadlifts, that's gonna be my main lift. And then after that, we have a strict press, which is my second main lift. Then after that, I usually have two or three accessories. And those accessories are used to work similar muscle groups that were in the main lifts or weak areas in those main lifts. Uh, and that's what I'll do. So typically we're gonna do a row variation, which will help build the back, which will then help with the deadlift. And then we'll do something for our shoulders, which would help with the press, right? 
Um, and then the last one is typically going to be a little bit higher volume. So any of those accessories are typically higher volume in that eight to 12 rep range, more like hypertrophy or bodybuilding training. Uh, and then usually the last one is probably gonna be the most reps, kind of just fry it out. But what a lot of people do is they end up using too many accessory exercises and they get what everybody deems as junk volume, but that just means that we're so fatigued, we would be better off by spreading that volume out throughout the week with different sessions than put it all into one, right? One, because it's gonna be very fatiguing and take longer to recover from. Two, you're not really getting much out of it, so I'd rather, like I said, instead of doing six accessories, just take three, you know, push them really hard, focus in on exactly what I'm trying to do, and then get another day down the road, which would be like, you know, my Wednesday or Friday to add a little bit more uh, accessories and volume in because then I'll be recovered and I can repeat that system. So for me, it's all about training as long as I can, making as much progress as I can without getting injured, without getting over fatigued, uh, and just keeping that training progressing. So hopefully that helps, but just try to figure out your primary lifts and then your accessories to help complement those primaries and bring up weak points. I got a question from B. K. Norski, or B. Norski. If you had an hour to train three times a week in a basic garage gym, what would you do? Seem to be a lot of replies here, so I appreciate your question. First off, all depends on your goals, right? You didn't specifically say your goals are strength or just being well-rounded or conditioning, right? So we have to define those goals. But I'll give you kind of a breakdown depending on what your goals may be. Now, if I just wanted to get strong, think like power lifting, right? And I only had three days for an hour, I would do a full body split. So I'd have a little bit of pressing, squatting, and pulling in each one of my days. So I'd spread that volume out across three days and that would probably be all that I did. So. One day you can emphasize the bench press, a little bit of squat or deadlift, and then the next day maybe it's gonna be the squat or deadlift takes the main priority, a little bit of pressing, and then the last day maybe it's gonna be, once again, uh, squat or deadlift and some benching, and then accessories spread out throughout that. So it could be a little bit more stuff for your back, like some, some rows or uh, row variations, could be some more pressing with some dumbbells, could be some overhead work, uh, or maybe some leg work. And I spread that out throughout the week three times. You can get that done within an hour. You gotta be focused so you don't waste time or screw around. And typically what I do for my accessories, either a giant set or a super set to save time. Now, say your goals were to be well-rounded all around. So you want a little bit of strength, a uh, little bit of accessory, a little bit of conditioning. This is actually what we did a lot when I had the gym. So at the Lions Den, when people come in for classes, we had 60 minutes to get everything in. So we start with anywhere from a five to 10 minute warm up, priming the main muscles that we're gonna be using for the main lift. Then we'd get right into the main lift and we would do, uh, depending on how far out they were from a testing cycle, maybe it was gonna be five sets of five, or maybe it was gonna be five sets of three, or if we're doing a little bit more higher volume, maybe it's gonna be three sets of eight reps. And we're gonna give ourselves 15 minutes to get through that. Right, so your stopwatch, your clock's gonna be your best friend. Get that work in. Next, we have accessory to help complement that main lift. Typically, we picked two or three accessory exercises, always paired up uh, with at least one core exercise. So, say it was a squat day. Maybe we do some lunges. Maybe we do something for the hamstrings, like an RDL. Uh, and then maybe we did uh, some sort of sit-ups or hanging leg raises or something for the core and we would use that as a giant set. So you go from one movement to the next, down to the last one, rest a little bit, complete that. And you can do that for either sets or time. So if you wanna get three sets into those accessories, cool, go for it. If you are short on time, just put 15 minutes or 12 minutes on the clock and rep it as many times as you can. And then from there, you have the remaining anywhere from you know 10 to 15 minutes to do conditioning. And you can do either an AMREP, a Tabata, every minute on the minute. And that is kind of a really easy way to get your full body in uh, with the strength portion, the accessories, and the conditioning. So that's kind of how I'd handle it depending on your goals. Now, if you're a beginner, you may get away with a push-pull leg split, but I find that the more advanced you get in your training, 
that tends to stop working and you have to go more towards a full body split. But once again, all depends on your goals. And this is why I have the training app, right? The app does all this stuff for you. So if you haven't checked out the Zastrang training app or any other apps from companies, the coaching is just done for you, right? We take that time away from you. You just pick what you wanna do and get after it. Uh, but that's typically what I would do in that situation. All right, so Joe Nava3551 said, can you just give a really rough outline on a power building split? Do you like starting with compounds first, then moving on to accessories in that order, question mark, etc. from one Joe to another? Thanks, man, hope you're well. Okay, well, you just opened a can of worms, so I hope you're, you're ready for it uh, because this whole power building thing really fires me up. I know it's not the intention of your question, but I saw a lot of, you know, higher up YouTubers, influencers, whatever you want to call them, going on this whole power building rant. I don't know if it was last year or several months ago, whatever. And it got me, it just got me fired up. I didn't really look into it too much because I already knew what was going to happen, right? We have the evidence based camp, which is probably saying that if you want to do power building, you really shouldn't because it's not efficient. You should rather just focus on hypertrophy or strength training because when you try to do two at the same time, you get a watered down result. Cool. Then we have the other camp, which is people trying to defend power building and how they would do it. Right, now where does Coach Joe lie? He's probably right freaking stab, dab in the middle. And the reason being is, at the end of the day, all I care about is compliance from you guys, right? So if that means that you want to do a power building program, by all means, go for it. If that's what keeps you in the gym and you're happy and excited and it's you know making you get progress towards those goals, then that's a win, right? There's probably more efficient ways to do it. And I understand where the evidence base is coming from that you should just probably have a season of hypertrophy training, right? And then do a strength block or a periodization and maximize your strength. I get that. I get that. And it does work. At the same time, I've run splits like I do now where I have my compounds first, and this is kind of to answer your question, right? And then I have my accessories after, and not only do I get freaking balls strong, I also look good. A lot of people, like, you know, not trying to be weird, are like, hey, how do I look like you? And this is how I train, right? Where I do have these main compounds that I like sticking in that three to five rep range, unless I need to get specific for something, that three to five is that sweet spot, right? Where I get the power, I get the strength, I get a little bit of hypertrophy from those sets of five. And then when I move to my accessories, I keep it anywhere in that eight to 12 rep range window, which only brings up my weak areas in the compound lifts, and then also makes me pretty aesthetic. So there's obviously other factors such as nutrition and what have you, but the whole thing just got kind of mind boggling that people wanted to start this whole kind of, I don't even know what you call it, argument or debate debacle over power building uh, because I found that if it works for you, cool, do it, right? So back to the main point here, how do I set it up typically when I do it? Yeah, it depends on if you wanna do like a push-pull leg split or it depends if you wanna do upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, right? How many weeks are you, or how many days a week are you training, right? There's, there's a lot of nuance to this, uh, but the way I used to do it is I had a deadlift day, a benching day, a squat day, and an overhead press day. And I treated those main movements just like I would with strength training, staying in that you know three to five rep range with higher intensities. And then after that, I would pick variations or accessories that were similar to the movement patterns to get me stronger in that main lift and then also to uh, just build some more muscle with those higher rep ranges and more hypertrophy training. I did that for a while and it worked really well. Then what I found is the frequency was too low. So then what I started doing was a four to five day split where uh, day one would be like a deadlift, overhead press, and then some more pulling and shoulder work for the accessories. Then the second day would have been more like bench pressing, squatting, and accessories for those lifts. Uh, so it really depends on what has worked for you. Start with that frequency of one time per week with the compounds. If it works, cool, pick one or two compounds and then pick you know two or three accessories and do that each day that you train. 
Once that no longer works, then maybe switch it up to a higher frequency of, you know, squatting twice a week, deadlifting twice a week, benching twice a week, and then adding in accessories and changing the variations a little bit. So you're not always doing the same accessories if you're doing it more uh, than one time per week and see how that works for you. So there's kind of my freaking rant, but listen, like everybody gets so stuck in the weeds with the science and you know, the, there's the science camp and there's the, the bros, right? And I think the answers lie in the middle and the answers also heavily depend on who you are. And a lot of the times these debates are people with their egos just going at each other to prove who's right, who's wrong. And it gets a lot of attention and a lot of attraction, which builds their names up. Uh, and I think sometimes that's more what it's about is like the ego type thing. When at the end of the day, compliance is the science. Okay, I'd rather see you happy training you know, maybe, maybe your program's not as efficient due to what all the data and research says, but you're freaking loving it, you're having a blast, and yeah, you're making progress. Maybe it's not as much as you could, but at the same time, it doesn't matter because you'll get there eventually, all right? So yeah, there's, there's my long-winded freaking title of the video. Coach Joe's thoughts on power building or power building rant, blah, 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 blah. Sorry, I just took up the majority of the video talking about that, but I had to get it off my chest. I had to say it with my chest, you know what I'm saying? So the slingshot bench is done. I got my three sets of 10 with 275. I felt like I probably could have went 280 to 290. So I'll try to push that next week. Once again, just being super cautious with my pec, but the slingshot definitely helps. Uh, just making sure that I feel comfortable. It's kind of taking away that bottom pressure, uh, which is typically where it hurts. And it's giving me that little boost through that sticky point and really helping my lockout and strengthening my triceps. So, Finish that up. Now we're just gonna do a quick pump superset of some incline dumbbells and then some tricep pushdowns. Last couple weeks, uh, they've been feeling really good. So I'm actually gonna push the weight. I'm only using uh, 40 pounds on the tricep press machine, which seems light, but for some reason, this one's just a lot harder than your standard cable that you would use in like a commercial gym or something. Uh, and I don't know how much the actual frame that I'm lifting weighs either, so that's added, but I just count the plate weight. So. I'll do uh, three sets back and forth, really no rest between the movements, but I'll rest after I'm done the super set. And I'm looking to get anywhere from that 10 to 12 rep range with the incline. And then I'm gonna push a little bit higher, like 12 to 15 for the tricep uh, uh, push down. So that's what we got there. We do have our last question that I'll answer before I close this video out. And this one, to be honest with you, I don't really have a great answer, uh, but it was from Warrior. If you could Frankenstein together a bodybuilder, which body parts from which bodybuilder would you pick? And to be honest with you, I mean, this is cliche, but I think Arnold is a freaking just specimen. It'd be great to look like Arnold. But I think the closest thing to that would probably be like Seabum, where Seabum isn't like a mass monster. I'm not a big fan of the mass monsters and that kind of generation of bodybuilding. I like more of a classic physique. And I think that he's got really great proportions. Uh, he looks athletic, you know, as well as he has you know, his stage presence, which is obviously the best in the world. He's, he's won uh, the Olympia multiple times. So he's kind of the guy that I probably would want to look like. Uh, but just, I'm one of those guys where I want to be strong. I also want to look good and I want to be functional. So it's, it's hard to have that hybrid or best of all of it because you are kind of watering down your potential in each one of those realms. Uh, but I find for my lifestyle, and how I want to look and feel that that's kind of where I'd want to be where yeah I can deadlift six seven hundred pounds right I can also probably hop into a physique competition if I had you know a few months to prep for and on top of that I can go out and you know be athletic or go for rocks or hikes or you know do some sprints and stuff like that so that's kind of where I'm at and I understand like I said it's not like I'm an expert in one specific thing but I like kind of you know, being pretty good at a lot of things. But yeah, so you guys are watching the training footage. That's pretty much it. I just wanted to put this video out and answer your questions. I'll keep doing this, uh, which is nice for you guys to interact with me and ask your personal questions. And it kind of switches up the format a little bit. You're seeing a little bit of nutrition. You saw my, my uh, healthy pigs in a blanket. So give that a shot. Let me know what you think. We got Jordan training for her strongman competition. Super pumped about that. Uh, and that's about it. We're just getting prepped for the Arnold, guys. So if you're going to be at the Arnold, we'll be at the Grip Genie booth in the demo section, just playing with grips and stuff and hanging out with you. So stop on by, check it out, see what Grip Genie has to offer, shake hands with us, get some pictures, 
and kick it. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much it. Uh, this last week was pretty rough. Uh, I think, I'm not sure if you've seen the video yet or not, uh, but I ended up getting uh, an infection in my leg, which sucked. And I was on some hardcore antibiotics, which absolutely destroyed my stomach all week. So not only did I not have an appetite, uh, but I was just sick a lot. So just kind of getting into training, doing whatever I can, you know, it's just my, my baseline expectation is get in and do something. I, I knew my body wasn't hundred percent. So I was just trying to do what I could, you know, with the circumstances. Uh, but yeah, so that's it. Not going to keep rambling on. If you guys liked the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I think we worked on the monetization issues and the music where I'm not really playing too much music. And we also have live streams coming out. Got the stuff for that. Really excited. And just a lot of future videos. We're just rolling this content train out. So if you were on board, choo, choo, let's go. All right. So guys, make sure you stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. I'll catch up with you guys next time. Peace.